God has a calling for each and every single one of us. God gave me a certain type of genetics. Bodybuilding is all about. Ronnie Coleman is arguably the best bodybuilder of all time, having won the Mr. Olympia title for eight consecutive years. Even though his bodybuilding championships are behind him, he's making more money now than he ever has in the past. From his multi-million dollar income, bodybuilding businesses, and full rags to riches story, that's definitely gonna inspire you to hit the gym, make some money, and also subscribe. But first, a quick thank you to our sponsor, NetSuite. Ronnie Coleman has an amazing business, although the start of every amazing business comes with a strong foundation. And a strong foundation does not include complicated spreadsheets and countless different softwares. If you want to help restructure your business but you don't know where to start, just remember these three numbers from our sponsor, NetSuite. That would be 36,000, 25, and 1. 36,000 because over 36,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite and stopped wasting time on things like manual data entry and sifting through scattered data. 25 because NetSuite has spent 25 years helping businesses drive down their costs. And 1 because NetSuite is an all-in-one solution that allows you to manage all of your KPIs or key performance indicators with one efficient system. NetSuite will help prevent all the busy work that comes with scaling up your business. And even if you're not looking to scale, NetSuite helps you cut down on mistakes with manual data entry. So get a full picture of your business and start making better decisions faster. And right now you could download NetSuite's popular KPIs checklist for free at netsuite.com slash iced. Again, that's netsuite.com slash iced to get a free checklist on popular KPIs. netsuite.com slash iced. And again, it's free. You may as well do it because it costs you nothing. So enjoy. Thank you so much. And now let's get back to the episode. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. It's an honor. <laughs> it really, really is. Really an honor. Watching your videos when I was just getting into the gym was so inspirational for me. I think it was really you and Jay Cutler for me. It was <laughs> yeah. just like watching you guys lift. The dedication was insane. It just it got me hyped up to go to the gym. It was inspiration for me to want to work out. Well, me and Jay Cutler had some pretty good battles over the years. So Jay was one of the reasons why I was so hyped up in the gym a lot of times. Really? <laughs> so I could imagine what he probably could have done for some other people if he did that for me. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm sure you've said this a million times, but just for people who aren't familiar with you and your story, at what age did you get into bodybuilding? The bodybuilding itself, I think I was like 26. And I started working out when I was 12 though, you know. As a kid uh, growing up in a small town, everywhere I went, <laughs> People always ask me if I worked out uh, when I was about 10 years old. And this went on for a very long time. By the time I got like 12, I'm like, man, I wonder what I look like if I really start working out. At 12? Yeah, yeah. But this, this was after everywhere I went, people asked me, do you work out? You can't be. Do you work out? You can't be. Like, no, I don't work out. How, how big were you at 12? <laughs> I'm just big. How big what, were you? At 10, you mean? At 10, yeah. I was bigger than the regular. Like, uh, you have muscles and everything? I had muscles at, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was pretty muscular at 10. What about like height-wise? I looked like I worked out all the time. No. I'll, I'll just say that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Is that just I pure look like genetics? I, yeah, exactly. It's pure genetics. Yeah, I get it from my mom for the most part because she was pretty muscular too her whole entire life. So at the age of 12, I mean, after hearing all this, do I work out for so long? I'm like, man, I wonder what I look like if I actually started working out. And I got tired of saying no. <laughs> <laughs> So I just started working out when I got, you know, 12 years old. And I kind of fell in love with it when I got to, like, I'm almost 13. And uh, when I was 13, some of the guys in high school said, man, you pretty big guy. You, when you come to high school, we want you to be on our powerlifting team. Like, oh, man, I can't wait till I get to the high school so I can get on this powerlifting <laughs> team so I can really... You know, you know, find out how to really work out because I didn't really know too much at the, at, about, at, at the time I was doing. You know, when I started, you know, I didn't look at no magazines and yeah. I just did. You know what I thought you should be doing. You know, for to build muscle, which wasn't too much of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but more, no, no more than what probably like curls and overhead uh, presses and stuff like that. But once I got to the uh, high school and uh, learned how to do powerlifting. That's when I really fell in love with working out big time. At 12, though, where did you go to work out? Was it like at a gym or was yeah. it like a... We had a little gym at a, at a school. Really? <laughs> it wasn't much. It yeah. just, you know, a few dumbbells 
few bars. It, it wasn't like, you know, we had these machines. <laughs> yeah. It was just a few dumbbells and a few bars. And that was it. It was it wasn't nothing. Actually, I had probably more than what they had at school when I went out and bought this 110 pound uh, concrete weight set from Walmart. I've had, I had more weights when I bought that from Walmart than we had at school. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't even realize they had concrete and then, uh, weights. In the, in the backyard, me and my friends, you know, we used to work out just about every day. We'd be back there squatting, <laughs> doing curls and stuff like that. This was like when I was like 13, you know. How did you learn to enjoy working out? Because for me, I've been working out now, I would say inconsistently for like three years, consistently for about a year. Mm -hmm. And still, even today, I have kind of a love-hate relationship with it. A lot of the times I really don't want to work out. I don't want to go to the gym. I feel exhausted. Sometimes I really enjoy it. But how do you learn to enjoy it at 12 years old where I feel like most people just want to go out, hang out with their friends, play kickball, and have fun? I don't think it was too much really about enjoying it. It was more I was uh, curious how, it was, how it would look. If I started working out, it was more of that. But, you know, as I got into it and learned more, I started falling in love with it, especially when I got to high school and got on the powerlifting team and started doing contests and stuff. I really, you know, everybody got their thing that, you know, we'll put on this earth for. And I, I believe, you know, God gave me a certain type of genetics to uh, <laughs> display on a level that wasn't meant to be uh, unseen by the masses for the most part. It was like a hobby for me for the most part. And that initial spark of love, you would say, came from powerlifting learning, yeah, and competing? Yeah, yeah, learning how to work out properly. And work out to, properly. Yeah, work out properly and how to, you know, get stronger, you know, because, you know, the, cute, the older you are, the more stronger you want to be. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> so I learned about a lot how to become stronger how to, you know, become bigger and stuff like that. Now, it was how much, more like a yeah. curiosity thing than anything. Hmm. Was there ever a competitive element in the beginning for you of just like, I want to be stronger than that guy? Or was it more for yourself of like, if I could <sighs> lift myself, you know, outlifted a month ago, then that's a win? No, I, I would say it was more of a competitive thing because since, you know, I was competing once I got to high school, I was competing against other, you know, schools for the most part. I don't really know who all was in those meets because some of those <laughs> guys look pretty old to me. <laughs> you know, they were like 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 the local meet in that town. I don't think they said only high school people can join. You, you had to be a certain age. I don't think they did it off that. They just said whoever showed up <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and wanted to compete could compete. Because uh, some of those guys were pretty big and Real strong. Now, back then, what did you think you wanted to do for a living? Back then, I wanted to play football for yeah. a living because I played football in junior high, high school, college. And uh, I remember <clears throat> talking to some of the scouts from the pros. And they would come to the school I was at all the time. And, you know, the guys that were, that looked, you know, that played real well were the guys that they let uh, do trials with the scouts mm -hmm. and I you know I was one of those guys that you know did the trials and everything and uh, I was supposed to, at least I thought I was gonna get drafted <laughs> at the end of the year at least that's what the guy was telling me one of the scouts was telling me yeah. he's looking at me to get drafted but <laughs> when that didn't happen of course you know since I had a degree and I did pretty good in school I figured I'd just uh, go down another path why don't you think you got picked why don't I think yeah. To be honest with you, after I look at it, I, I, I see that uh, God had uh, another path for me to go down. Sure. Had this certain path that he wanted me to go down, you know. We're not uh, asked to be here. Uh, none of us asked to be here. We all put here. And God has a calling pretty much for, uh, at least I think he does, for each and every single one of us, yeah. most of us have either a career or a calling, you know, that we're going to, you know, a career path that we're going to go down, uh, a path of, of a calling that we're going to go down. And uh, for me, I think the reason why I didn't, because he had our pre-chosen, you know, that calling path for me to go down. Mm -hmm. Because I can still remember to this day, 
me going on a lot of those interviews that I went on, because I got a, I got my degree in accounting, and I graduated at the top of my class. I graduated cum laude. I just knew I was going to get a job in accounting. I went on probably maybe 100 or so interviews and got turned down by all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of knew then. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so you're just that, like after, this is after, after, yeah. after a while. I, I knew at least. It's like this is the universe telling me <laughs> I, this is not the path to go down. <laughs> exactly. How do you shift from that to then becoming a police well, officer? Hold on, I'm oh, curious. Wait, hold on. How did you get How did you get turned be. down when you graduated <laughs> cum laude? Uh, like I was saying earlier, <laughs> just God's God, plan. God, God had a plan for, for me. To, uh, you know, do something else. Was there ever a reason why they tell you that, uh, like, we're not going to hire you? Like, too yeah. qualified. Your grades yeah. were too yeah, good. Yeah, Could it be reason. that they see your stature <laughs> and just, like, maybe you don't fit the mold of, like, what an account, like, I imagine account, like, a scrawny, kind of, like, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, I don't know. Glasses and, like. <laughs> yeah, I guess they knew, too, that, you know. <laughs> God, tell, God telling them, hey, I got some else playing for you. <laughs> Don't hire him. <laughs> I got a random tangential question. For those that maybe haven't figured out God's plan for them yet, <clears throat> or their course or direction that they should be going in life, the reason why they were put here, mm. how do you recommend they go and they find that? Or how do they yeah. know that the right path that they're on right now is the de designated path? For me, it was pretty easy. Whatever it is that you are so in love with, that you think is a hobby, and that you think you probably can't get paid for because it, you have so much fun doing it. They said if you <clears throat> have passion for something, you never really work a day in your life. If it's something like that, that's probably what you were chosen, uh, you were put here to do. That's probably your calling or your your career path that, you know, God has chosen for you. I completely agree with that. For me, that's been both <laughs> being a real estate agent and YouTube. I would have worked for free, and I did for quite some time. I just loved it. It's exactly. all I wanted to do. Mine the fact was, that it makes money mine, is... Mine was working for the police department and uh, doing bodybuilding. Yeah. I, I would. I actually did work at the police department for free. Yeah. <laughs> when I, you know, when I uh, won the Olympia, my third time winning, you know, I had to give it up because <laughs> I was so busy. Uh, going on so many trips and doing so many appearances that I didn't have time to really do police work. And uh, you can say I did bodybuilding for free, too, because when I was amateur, <laughs> you don't get paid nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was amateur for a little while there. Now, how do you make the switch from wanting to be in accounting to police work? Yeah, that was pretty easy for me. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I remember all those interviews I went on and never got hired. There's only so, so long you can... I have a dream of getting hired by somebody and to you, you know, just decide, hey, this ain't going to work. <laughs> I got to find something else that was, uh, you know, that I'm, I think I might enjoy. I still remember to this day, every time I got the newspaper, <laughs> it was always hiring for a police officer. It was like no experience needed, you know, most of the time. <laughs> you know, most of the time you, when I went on those accounting up. jobs, they always like, you got to have these two years experience, five years experience. But the police job was always no experience needed. I got to thinking, man, that, that, that sounds like me back then. <laughs> I ain't got no experience. And they, they got these big old ads in uh, classified. I'm like. I think that ad is calling me, <laughs> so I think I'm going to answer that one. Now, don't you have to go through police academy? Yeah, exactly. And then what was that like for you? How that long was, was that? Fun. A few it months? It was three months. Okay. It was three months at the, uh, at, it was a college called uh, TCJC, Tarrant County Junior College. And then I had another three months at uh, the people that hired me. They had their own academy. And uh, after that, that's when you hit the streets. It's only yeah. six months of training to become a police officer. No, yeah. Did you need a bachelor's degree as well? No, nope. no. You don't have to have a bachelor's degree. Is, is All it you need is a high school diploma. But the department I had hired on to, that you had to have a, a four-year degree. Mm. If you didn't have a four-year degree, they wouldn't hire you. Although before we go into that, as I'm sure you've seen, our online information is spreading everywhere. And unfortunately, there are some data broker websites out there that take your information, sell it, and sometimes nefarious people get a hold of it. Clearly, this sort of stuff is on the rise, and as a part of the younger generation, we know when an email or website looks sketchy. 
but what about our parents? Their information gets gathered and then sold on data broker websites, which then often go to scammers who could create personalized messages to try to scam them with. Delete Me is a software that hunts down your private information that's exposed online and eliminates it from those annoying data broker websites. Plus, Delete Me will continue to remove your data every three months, helping safeguard your privacy year round. And they even offer package deals so you could protect your own information while helping your parents or even kids who are getting online at an increasingly early age. So take control of your and your loved one's personal information and regain peace of mind through today's sponsor, Delete Me. Check out joindeleteme.com slash ICH20 or use promo code ICH20 to get an exclusive 20% off all consumer plans. Again, that's code ICH20 at joindeleteme.com. Protect yourself and stay private with Delete Me. And now with that said, let's get back to the episode. I'm just curious, uh, <laughs> how were the physical challenges of like getting to be a policeman? Did you have to go through a physical examination or some oh, yeah. course or something like yeah. climb a wall or maybe like bench a plate? They, they made, they, see, I think they made us run a mile and a half. Then we had the, this obstacle course we had to go through. It was like three walls. One was like four foot high. One was like five foot high. And the last one was like, Seven foot high, you had to yeah. you know, get over all three of those and then go do some other stuff, you know, like push ups or sit ups or something. And how was that for you? Was it just like a walk in the park? Walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's a, a normal a workout for you every morning. Even a mile anyway. and a half, because I ran a mile and a half back then in, in like five minutes, you know. <laughs> that wasn't nothing for me. Now, I hear you also have to be tasered and pepper sprayed. Is that true? That's not true. <laughs> that's not true? You didn't no. get pepper sprayed or tasered? No, I didn't shoot myself my own gun either. No. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I figured that those things would work for me <laughs> just by looking at what they did yeah. to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. So, but it was volunteer. Yeah. It was, it was kind of like a volunteer thing. Got if it. you wanted to get pepper sprayed or tasered, you could. <laughs> <laughs> and he that's said all no. you had to say to me is, <laughs> is volunteer and nope, no thank you. <laughs> After I saw what it did to other people, uh, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see that happen to me. <laughs> Not oh like gosh. that. Not uh, after I saw what they went through. Do you remember what the pay was like back then when you started working as a police officer? Yeah, it was pretty good. We made about, it was back in 88, I hired on 89. We made about 45000 a year. That's fantastic. Yeah, so it was almost like. You got 100 like grand a year 15 today. an hour yeah. or something like that, 10 an hour, 12 an hour. I know with part-time jobs, we made 20 an hour. So it, it was pretty good money. And then you had the part-time job where you could make like 20 an hour, and it was all cash at the end of the night. Really? I had three of those jobs. Worked at Denny's. I worked at a, at a boot store. Uh, and then uh, I worked at my apartment complex. What were you doing Free at the rent. apartment? <laughs> Free rent. Uh, just tell me really? to turn the music down. Really? So you're one of the managers or like one of the, the property, like, on-site well, property like, like managers? On-site like... security. You know, I had to lock up the pools, tell people to get out, you know. And then uh, and somebody complained about loud music. They would all, always call you and tell them, go over there and tell people to turn the music down and stuff like that. And they listen to you, right? Oh, of course oh, they, they have to. <laughs> yeah, they don't have a <laughs> choice, man. If they knew what was good for them, they would listen to <laughs> How did you get that situation? How did you get free rent like that? How, oh, they it, always put ads up at, at the police department saying that, you know, we hired, we need a security officer or something like that. Oh, that's smart. Mm-hmm. No, you know, they had one person that was over all that stuff, and they would... Uh, go out and get people to do that kind of work. Yeah. Would you say you've always been good with your money? Because it seems like wanting to go into accounting, like <laughs> yeah, you're I've very numbers been, person. Yeah, I've always been real good with my, my money. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I, I already have a retirement in place that I collect, I think, this year and next year. And then at 62, Social Security. So yeah. that's like three. I heard you even worked at Domino's because you'd yeah, be able to I, eat for free, yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> yeah, that job came along... Because I needed a job because I had a car note coming up. <clears throat> Back when I graduated uh, college, they had this thing called a college degree program at the dealerships. They would let anybody that had a college degree come in and buy a car. <sighs> the only thing was they would delay your car note for three months. So I didn't have a job, of course, when I went in <laughs> <laughs> and, and bought this car. And uh, that third month was a coming up. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and I'm like, damn, I ain't got a job. <laughs> My car know to do next month. <laughs> so I'm like, I got to take the first thing that came along, come along. 
And Domino's Pizza was the first thing come along. So I took that job. <laughs> so I would I could pay my car note. How much pizza did you eat though? Every single day. Really? Every day, as much as I could. <laughs> was that? Did you find that was that good? Was, that was dinner. Was that good for working out? I no, that was, was good like... for finance. Cause okay. I couldn't afford a uh, regular, for, you know, dinner to buy dinner. That's how who I was back in those days. You know, I ate yeah. pizza for dinner. And then, then I got tired of eating pizza after a while. And, Kentucky Fried Chicken was next door to me. And I'm like, <laughs> when are they tired of eating chicken like I'm tired of eating pizza? Let me call them and ask them. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I did. And they're like, yeah, you want to trade? They're like, yeah. So I would trade them no. fried chicken for pizza. Then I got tired of eating fried chicken. Well, Burger King was next door to them. No way. <laughs> so I just started calling everybody, just trading food. <laughs> so it was still free. It's, Everything you were eating was free. It was smart. free, yeah. Free food, free rent. <laughs> what was the what was the car you bought? It was a Pontiac Sunbird. Okay, eighty seven. And how long did you keep that car for? I kept that car for four years. Oh wow! And delivered pizza in it and everything. <laughs> Were you not concerned about like the macros of the pizza? I, get, I didn't know chicken. what that was. <laughs> no, but you, weren't you working out very powerlifting? I, I, yeah. I had abs all the time. You know, no matter what I ate, mm. I, I was in. Pretty good condition, no matter what I ate. And back in those di- days, I didn't know what diet was, so I ate a lot of fried chicken, a lot of hamburgers, and a lot of pizza. <laughs> and I was still in pretty good condition, so genetics are uh, pretty, pretty good there. And then at what point did you start taking your diet seriously? When I started bodybuilding. And that was at age 26, Six. yeah. That's when I started taking it serious, yeah. Tell us a story about the guy who told you to get into bodybuilding. I found that really interesting. Oh, Brian? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I showed up on a call one day with another officer, and he was like, man, where you work out at? I'm like, dude, I'm working out at the station where it's free. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, you ain't no weights in there for you. I'm like, dude, you're right. It really ain't. The, the most I could put on the bench press was 315. And I think back in them days, I was benching like four or something. He's like, wow. yeah, man, you ought to come to this gym, Metroflex. You know, you got a lot of weights in there. I'm like, okay. So the next day I go to the gym. And the owner, Brian, is like, man, I had 22-inch arms back there all, mus- all, all muscle. Brian's like, man. You're a pretty big guy. You you uh, compete? I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> I've never competed a day in my life. And I uh, don't want to compete either. And he's like, why? I'm like, well, I heard those dudes, number one, they have to diet. And uh, I don't want to do no diet because I'm used to eating, you know, hamburgers, mm-hmm. pizza, and uh, sloppy joes, stuff like that. <laughs> And then uh, I also heard that they had to take steroids. You know, me being a police officer, I can't do none of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. He's like, oh, you, you, you would not do none of that with, with the most you got. I'm like, nah, that's okay. I don't, I don't, I don't want to bodybuild. <laughs> no, thank yeah. you. Second day I come in, he's still laughing. Like, dude, man, you, you should really get this bodybuilding thing a, a shot. He's like, you, you could be world champion. You could be. Mr. Olympia, I'm like, no, nah, dude, I already told you. <laughs> I'm not really interested, interested, uh, interested in it. And he's like, okay, well, the third day, he's still on me. <laughs> and I'm still turning him down. <laughs> so the fourth day, he's like, I tell you, I, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to give him an ultimatum that he can't refuse. So the fourth day, I come in, and he's like, dude, He's like, I really think you can do real good at this bodybuilding stuff. He's like, I tell you what. He said, I give you a free membership to the gym. If you compete in this show coming up in like four months, he's like, I'll teach you how to train as a bodybuilder. I'll teach you how to diet. I'll teach you how to pull. I'll teach you everything you need to know. And you can work out in this gym for free. That was I'm, it. I'm like, dude, you should have led with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he did. He taught me how to train. As a bodybuilder, you know, because it's totally different yeah. than what I was doing. <laughs> and he taught me how to pose, just go to this guy's house like two or three times a week and just have these two hour posing sessions. And he taught me how to diet, you know, how to, you know, eat <laughs> five, six meals a day because I'm used to eating like three, four real big yeah. meals. <laughs> so it seems like throughout your life, free has been something that's gotten your attention. Where do you think that free. started? When I was. Real young, yeah. <laughs> and I was poor. <laughs> uh, every time somebody said something about free, and 
and I was uh I didn't way. have the money so, to pay for it. Uh, uh, didn't want use money to pay for it. You had my attention. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned free. You you pretty much got me. Oh gosh. So when you applied for the first bodybuilding competition, how much work goes into that? What's the cost of that? Because I'd imagine it would get very expensive for the amount of food that you would be eating and for the amount of training and just like all the attention that you're putting on yourself. That's why I had those other jobs. I'll say I worked at Denny's every Friday and Saturday night. And sometimes I worked at Western Warehouse at Booth Store on, on, on my, on my days off, yeah. you know, and then I worked for my apartment complex and, uh, those three jobs, almost four, <laughs> you yeah. got police department. <laughs> they helped me out. They helped me out a lot. Cause like I said, you know, Diet food was real expensive, you know, all the stuff you had to buy. And then uh, supplements, Brian pretty much gave me mm. for free. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> have to pay. I didn't have to pay. And it was a lot because at least like every two or three months, you know, what I'd have to have all these aminos, these proteins, multivitamins, minerals, all this new stuff they was coming out with, vanadyl sulfate and all these new thing that they had on the market that, you know, helped put on muscle back in those days. Mm -hmm. Brian gave me all that for free. And uh, it helped out a whole lot. You must have been saving a lot of money, though, because you had multiple different sources of income. I wasn't saving a dime. (laughs) No rent? I was spending every dime I got. Back into your body? On my body. Interesting. The chicken chicken was expensive, but you had to have chicken breast. Turkey was was expensive. You had to have turkey breast, and uh, you had to eat five, six times a day. You know, so you was constantly buying a lot of chicken, a lot of turkey. Me, I was eating fish back then, so it was a lot of fish. You know, it was a lot of food, a lot of rice, a lot of potatoes. You know, you was constantly buying all this healthy food, and it was real expensive. And uh, I had a car note. <laughs> car. <laughs> <I had insurance. laughs> How much do you think you were spending back then? Oh, man. I was spending, see, I was making, I was spending at least probably a good extra $10,000 just on food. Really? Um, yeah. But once I started eating six times a day and eating more, because I used to eat, <laughs> I didn't know at the time, I used to eat like 10 12 ounces of food, you know, a tur- well, it was like <clears throat> steak, chicken, turkey. And then I had this nutritionist like, dude, you, you ain't eating enough. I'm like, what? He's like, you gotta, if you want to get bigger, you gotta eat more. I'm like, how much more? He's like, at least four or five ounces more than what you eating. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah. And uh, he was right. As soon as I started, went from like, 10 ounces to 16 ounces, yeah. that's when I started putting on size. Really? But it was so hard to eat that much food. And then I didn't have enough time in the day because I was working full time. So what I, had to, I, what I had to do is get up in the middle of the night, <sighs> eat, and go back to bed. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, you know, I slept, you know, like six hours a day. I would, I would wake up at, I'd go to bed at like four because I was up, you know, once I got off from work, I was up doing cardio and you know still trying to get all my my <laughs> rest of the stuff I had to do for the day so I'll go to bed from like four and I'd wake up at seven I would eat from seven to eight and wake up at eight and uh do my I mean work up I sleep from eight to eleven so yeah. it's seven to eight eat then eight to eleven sleep and wake up at eleven to uh do cardio eat and work out and then go to work. Why do cardio and then eat? It seems like the two would kind of cancel each other out. Well, see, you did cardio on an empty stomach because that's, that's when your body is in this real high state of burning calories, mm. kind of like a catabolic state. So you want to do your cardio as soon as you wake up. Mm. I, I, like I had a trip me right beside my bed. Really? <laughs> I get out of bed. And get right on it every morning. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm curious if the interrupted sleep could adversely affect your gains. No, no none whatsoever. I did it for every last Olympia that I won. 
So, so that, okay. that 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 yeah. to be honest with you, that's when I started winning. When I when I started doing that. But I heard that sleep is one of the most crucial parts of getting gains and recovering and letting your muscles like get back to where they were. That's why I got a good six hours of sleep in every single day. See, by the time you know I lay down, I was I was snoring like three <laughs> minutes later. <laughs> every single time I went to sleep, I, even when I woke up and went back to bed, I was snoring three minutes later. Really? Yeah. Three hours of REM sleep, just knock out yeah. right into the right, deepest state. Yeah, yeah. So you naturally seem to function perfectly off of six, six hours, hours of sleep. sleep. Yeah. I need eight. So like, no, I need nine. Nine. Yeah. Uh, I was I was born lucky in it. I only needed six, and that's all I was able to yeah. get to. Because <laughs> like I said, I had a lot of stuff to do throughout yeah. the day. Did you end up buying your chicken and poultry and stuff like that from just a normal grocery store? Or did you find a different place where you could source the food for a discount because you're buying so much of it? I would try to, you know, give it like a discount, you know, if I bought so much. So <laughs> I would go to the store and like, hey man, I get like 20 pounds of, you know, steak uh, and give it at a discount because back then it was like it's like almost twenty dollars a pound. Mm. And he's like, "Yeah, I, I cut you a little, so like I give you for, to you like fifteen a pound you, if you bought like 20, 20 pounds at once." Like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Same thing with chicken, you know. Yeah, so that's what I did. <laughs> I bought a lot at once. Best thing about it is my mom cooked all my food, mm. so it was kind of like I was on a diet, but the food was so good. She was so such a good chef that it didn't seem like I was eating diet food because she was the best cook I ever known to this day. I was under the understanding that if you're a bodybuilder and you eat the same foods over and over and over again, eating food is more so treated like a chore and a responsibility than it is something that you can get enjoyment from because it's just like exactly. it's work. <laughs> so so you eat, you eat, you're eating for survival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you don't really care about the taste a whole lot but taste is pretty good because it makes to make you want to do it mm -hmm. but uh like i said my mom was like the best cook ever i mean i i, I didn't really know i was on a, i couldn't really tell i was on a diet and i would play these games with myself like you know for potatoes instead of eating just a regular baked potato i would get a crinkle cutter and cut it up to make it look like a french fry mm. and i would put it in the oven and uh, when, by, after about an hour of being in there, it kind of looked like a french fry. It was golden brown, you know. So I'm like, okay, I'm eating french fries now. <laughs> and people actually thought I was eating french fries. Too. How do you eat french fries on a diet? Uh, it's a secret. <laughs> now, at what point, though, did you realize that working out and eating healthy wasn't enough if you wanted to win Mr. Olympia? That was easy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I didn't place well, <laughs> and um, it, it was it was a while before I once I turned pro that you know I started placing a little bit better. When I was an amateur, of course I won just about every show I entered, you know. Yeah. But once I turned pro, it was a while. See, I turned pro in ninety one. Entered my first pro at ninety two. I won my first show in ninety five. So it's ninety two. 93, 94, like three years yeah. almost it took me. To and win. what were the biggest differences? Because I heard you say that you walked, you were talking to another bodybuilder who said, here's what I'm on. And if you want to get to my size, this is what I recommend. Why would they just give away their secrets? Because it seems to me like this would be a very closely guarded thing that people wouldn't want to explain what they're on. Uh, you know, any enhancements that they're doing because they wouldn't want someone else to compete. Oh, you make a very valid point there. Uh, I guess the guys, you know, that I grew up with, you know, to be honest with you, I guess they figured that, hey, everybody's body is different and uh, everybody's body is going to respond differently to different things. And then just because I'm telling you this don't necessarily mean that you're going to do it, you know. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because, so you know, it, it all depends on the person. Everybody's going to make a decision about what they are willing to do and not do. Yeah. So, I, and then, you know, you got to look at it too, that the guy that you're giving the information to, even though 
you're going to be up there on stage with them. It's not like you're making the decision about who, where everybody's going to place. You know, they have yeah. judges that's going to really make the final decision about how everybody places and everything. So I, I guess that's just where you, most of them looked at it. Cause yeah. a guy named Flex Wheeler, he taught me a whole lot. And uh, had it not been for some of the things that he taught me, uh, I really probably wouldn't have done as well. I know for a fact I wouldn't have done as good as I, as yeah. I did. And uh, then, then again, too, <laughs> God has a plan for each and every single one of us. You yeah. know, it's something it, I've always believed that something is meant to happen. And it is uh, God's plan for it to happen. It's going to happen, yeah. you know, regardless of where that information comes from. I believe that, you know, certain things that are destined to happen are going to happen regardless. Yeah. Eventually, you know. I agree with that. One way or another. Was there a specific moment that you can point to where you mm -hmm. realize not only are you obviously like a pro bodybuilder and you're really successful, but at an elite level, like in the top 10 or something where it's like, it's a serious, uh, accomplishment, like a, something elite rather than like, cause you, you grew up your entire life. People were complimenting you saying you had a great physique saying you yeah. should compete, but that's a big difference from like, like, you know, Ronnie Coleman. Like I said, that passion, you know, you have about doing certain things. You never really work in a day in your life. You know, I was having so much fun doing what I was doing. I didn't really look at it like that, you know. Of course, you know, the competitive side of you wants to do the very best you can. Or let me say, the competitive side of you wants to win every show you're in, you know. But the realistic side of you is like, well, some things are not possible. So you got to kind of like to take the good with the bad. If you're doing something you really, truly love doing. And uh, bodybuilding was something that I truly loved doing and look forward to doing each and, single, each and every single day. Working for the police department was something that I enjoyed doing and look forward to doing each and every single day. A lot of people used to ask me all the time, man, how do you, do, how do you work a full-time job and do this bodybuilding thing? There's no way I could work a job and do bodybuilding. I'm like... Yeah, that's 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 a pretty good question, but you know, I look forward to you know doing my job. Look forward to going uh, to to work at the police department. You know, you know when I have to go, and uh, those are things that I love doing. So, if there's a will, there's always a way, and I made a way. And then I have people like would act, would ask me like, so how, how do you do it? I said, well, goes back to that saying, there's a will, there's a way. So <clears throat> I figured uh, if I could work in the same area that I lived in, I can always go home and eat a meal. Because like I said, when I was at work, I had to eat two meals at work. Because I worked in the same area, area that I lived in, and it only took me 15 minutes <laughs> to eat <Yeah>. a meal because, <laughs> uh, you know, you're real hungry when it's time to eat. And when you're real hungry, it don't take long to put down some food. And I'm only eating like chicken and rice and that's it, you know. And <laughs> uh, it don't take uh, 10 minutes top for me to eat that. We get two 15-minute breaks if time allows, and a 45 minute lunch break at my job, if time allows. Yeah. But there were times that, you know, I'd be eating my lunch, dispatch is like, I need you to <laughs> clear that lunch and take this call. Okay. <laughs> so I had to clear, you know, in the middle of taking that bite, you gotta clear lunch and go answer a call. You don't get that, you know, get a lunch break that day. Now I know that you were a police officer very far into your bodybuilding career. So you're a huge guy showing up and, mm -hmm. and you know, breaking up fights or <laughs> yeah. showing up on the scene and stuff like that. I'm guessing that in and of itself disarmed any potential threats 
you know, some guy's acting violent. You show up, and he's just like, you know yeah. what? Quit it. I'm Never so sorry. Mind. Yeah. Put, put the handcuffs on. <laughs> exactly. Don't yeah. touch me. Yeah. They said mere presence of, of the uni uniform itself is, is, <laughs> is a, um, you know, creates pre peace. But when you... 320 pounds and you show up in that uniform <laughs> <laughs> it's instant instant peace <laughs> yeah instant peace was that so was that the case with up. did so did other officers notice this that when you would show up people behave oh, yeah, of course but when they they're did. there they kind yeah, like of like misbehave they did. yeah <laughs> i feel like that would make so much more sense for officers well, was, to get ripped a, uh, yeah there were a lot of officers that were smaller than me that had fights especially the girls they had fights all the time my whole 15 year career, I, not, I, I didn't have not one fight. Not one not fight. Not one. And I'm, every day, I'm like, okay, this is going to be the day. <laughs> you wanted to fight. <laughs> getting excited. Like, yeah, Someone's I'm getting excited. Every day I get to work, I'm like, this is going to be the day. <laughs> I have somebody, an ignorant person, you know, uh, challenge me or something. Yeah. Nope. They won the day. Uh, who would do that? They, they nobody. Nobody, nev yeah, nobody I mean never did it. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. It's not a coincidence. It's obviously not a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. But I Trust feel like me. that would be great for the police departments to now enforce in some capacity. Like, hey, you have to be really strong and maintain your, your peak physical profile so you can disarm certain situations and not yeah, have to, like, you know, just intimidation. Just you show up. Exactly. Like, yeah, a lot of this stuff is against the law, though, you know. Yeah. yeah. You can't do that, yeah. Jack. <laughs> I just say, I mean, it's a, it would make sense if we're it trying to protect and sense. serve. Yeah. Oh, just know? think, it, you know, it'd probably be a lot of peace in this world. Well, I think that's yeah. why yeah. bouncers are often... like me. At, yeah, all the bouncers <laughs> that you see outside of, the like, the best clubs, they're all, like, six foot four and ripped. Yeah. They're not going to hire a guy like me out in front of the club. You know, what's funny is I heard that you, you know, you never got into a fight. You're 15 years in the police department. Never. But you did get into Look a fight to working Denny's, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> I sure did. What was that guy thinking? He didn't see me. Or he, he wasn't thinking, he, No, right? he, he had his back turned to me. And uh, say he was walking out the door, actually getting ready to walk out. And I was, he never, he never saw me. He was drunk, of course, you know, for, first of all. He, he never saw me just sitting there. And uh, he's getting ready to walk out the door. And I'm like, hey, guy, I need you to calm down. And, of course, <laughs> he didn't see me. He, all he heard was a voice. And he's like, whatever. So I went and uh, grabbed him by the arm. And he pulled away. And that was the biggest mistake he ever made in his whole life. Because I tried to break his arm <laughs> and his leg. <laughs> <laughs> and his leg. And his and his face. And uh when uh when I finished with him, he was bleeding from the mouth, nose, and uh he had trouble with his arm. And uh matter of fact, he uh he complained, he wrote a letter and complained on me, filed police brutality against me. But when I was uh, in college, I was sports yeah. editor, so uh, I was real good at writing. And I took every technique that they taught me at the police department, and I used it in my my narrative. Yeah. So you know, <coughs> uh, to to tell you know why I did what I did. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, uh, I was a good, pretty good sports editor and, and a pretty good writer, you know, for the newspaper, college newspaper, they uh, wanted, they actually used my uh, narrative, narrative that I wrote, my rebuttal that I wrote, you know, when this guy tried to say, you know, <clears throat> you know I used excessive force. <laughs> And uh, they used my uh, narrative, my, my narrative to train the, the really? recruits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure did. I wrote it that good. Because yeah. I remember, you know, everything that I was taught, you know, when I was, uh, when I was sports editor. And uh, so needless to say, that went nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, I'm curious then, after winning the first Olympia, 
how much do you make from something like that? Like what changes financially when that happens? Are, are people throwing deals your way? Is there like a cash prize? I've always been curious about that. The biggest thing I got from winning the Olympia was the endorsement. Oh, the prize money for winning the Olympia, $100,000, that's for nothing. <laughs> you know, I did use my use that to pay off my house, but uh. the big money came from endorsements, you know. Yeah. Other stuff that I did, like I had a supplement contract, you know, uh, clothing contract. I had a uh, shoe contract. <laughs> so all the money, all the real money come from endorsements. Yeah. Do you remember back then how much that was? Combined, it was pretty close to a million dollars. Yeah, back in what year was this? 2000. Well, I won my first Olympia in 98. Okay, yeah, and of course, you know, <laughs> I was, I was, I had, a, I had quite a few endorsements though, quite a few. and then yeah. you know, I had a personal appearances I was doing, you know, so it was, it was. It was, it, was, it was in the millions. Do you like remember what you spent the money on? Were you were you frugal after that point because you always come I, from? I, 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 I saved a lot and put in, in, in retirement. Like I said, you know, I'll be uh, getting a retirement check, uh, I think, at the end of this year. Uh, and from one of those, and, and when I turn 60 next year, I get my police mm -hmm. retirement and then... Uh, you know, Social Security. I put I put money in. To, to, I put a lot of money into to that also. So, I'll uh, I'll be pretty pretty much set for for life. You know. <laughs> now, now, at what point then after winning did people start recognizing you when you would walk in as a police officer, and they would say, "Wait a second, are you Ronnie? Is that you? I've seen you." And then they just like they put down what they were stealing. And yeah. It's like <laughs> Yeah, because, uh, you know, everybody was doing stories on me. Uh, CNN was doing stories, the uh, local news channel, all of them. You know, I did so much with so many different news stations, paper. I, back then, you know, they had you know, a lot of magazine stuff. You know, I did a lot of magazine. I did uh, a lot of radio. I did a lot of radio. So back then, you know, I, I became known for that. You know, you do talk shows like Jay Leno and uh, Montel, even Roseanne had a show I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, I was I was pretty popular, you know, and still am today. You yeah, know? I, I think I'm more popular now than I was because of social media. Social yeah. media, you know, they didn't have that when I was coming up, you know. Because of the social media thing, I'm more popular today with the younger crowd than yeah. I am. Like I was just in a store <laughs> uh, right before I came here when we were at Chipotle getting. <laughs> I, mean, I think this kid had to be no more than eight years old. Like, I, I saw you on uh, TikTok. <laughs> on TikTok? <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to take a picture. And I get that a lot, though. And then, uh, like, when I was, I was just recently in uh, Italy, and most of the kids that came up to me were, uh, like, junior high and high school. So uh, I think uh, one of the people that was there asked the kid, how do you know him? And they like, yeah, we saw him on TikTok, or we saw him on YouTube or something, you know. Yeah. So, and I, so I say because of, you know, social media, I'm a lot more, like, three times more known than I was back then. So do you say then you're making more money now than you were? Way when? more. <laughs> really? Way, way more now than I did back then. Do you mind sharing how much you were making when you were winning Olympia multiple times in a row? A little over a million, you know, when I was winning the Olympia. And, you know, now I make... Millions from different sources, you yeah. know, like the YouTube. Uh, I got my own supplement company. Yeah. And I have a clothing endorsement, you know. But it, it's mostly uh, from social social media. For you doing social media, does, does that amount. feel like work, or is this something that you would do for free, like the other things, but you just happen to make money off of it? it it's something I would do for free. Yeah. <laughs> so just, I mean, what am I doing? Just 
talking about stuff. Uh, <laughs> Basically, or, or just, just talking about this. Just finding yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's, uh, that's not work. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it in a video that you said. I think it was a documentary where you said you'd go to work, and most people would say, you know, another, uh, another day, another dollar. But you said another day, another quarter. Another day? Another quarter. Yeah, exactly. Because of how much money you were making, making in bodybuilding. Yeah, and go compared work. to working with the police department. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do you, why, I know you say you enjoyed it so much. That's but why I did it. <laughs> just because you enjoyed it. Just because I enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, for me, it was uh, like an escape from it also. Yeah. You know, it, it allowed me not to think about it and that, and have it on my mind all the time. You know, just worrying about that. Yeah. One thing, you know, when somebody's out to try to kill you, and you, you know, you got a lot more to worry about than uh, when your next meal or when your next workout. Yeah. And when did you decide to make the shift into social media and, and why? Because it seems like you were at a point where it's like you could do anything in the world. You don't need to do anything for money anymore. You I mean, have a- it was kind of like one of those things that that was evident or obvious, you know, uh, there was the thing that everybody was doing, you know, so because everybody's doing it, it's only naturally natural for you to do it too. You know, I never forget, uh, (laughs) when, uh, what was that? Uh, Instagram came out, you know, they already had Facebook and some other ones. Probably MySpace before that. Man, you need to sign up for this Instagram thing. I'm like, no, I, I got enough on yeah. my plate to be worried about uh, Instagram. <laughs> She's like, well, I'm going to sign you up for it myself. And just because she did that, you know, I'm, I'm where I'm at today because of that, you know. She decided she was going to sign me up for it anyway. <laughs> if I wasn't going to sign it, because I really wasn't going to sign up for it, because I'm like, you know, I got enough, you know. I yeah. got email that I can barely keep up with this Facebook thing I can barely keep up with. Why do I want to, you know, <laughs> add to what I don't have enough time yeah. for anyway. But, uh, you know, it came obvious after a while that if uh, you really want to monetize your work <laughs> and make the most you can, this is the way to do it. Yeah. And it is so easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure everything so easy. is easy. It's got to be easy compared to what you were going through. Yeah, yeah, bodybuilding. Growing up, uh, I had some pretty hard jobs. This one job I had in Louisiana, it was called chopping cotton. It, but it's not what you think. Yeah. But when they first told me it was going to be chopping cotton, I'm thinking, okay, I got to go out there and, and chop the cotton. Yeah. No, you got to go out there and you got to chop the grass from around the cotton. So it don't, so the machine, well, when it comes along and picks it, you know, they had machines by the time. Right. <laughs> when the machine comes along and pick it, you don't pick up the grass too. Mm. That was the hardest job ever because you out there from six in the morning until 12 noon. They will not let you work p- past that because you will die. You will really? literally die, no matter how much water you're drinking. Because, uh, you know, have you ever seen cotton, the way they plant it? Mm-hmm. Well, it's like, I'd see, I I'll, think I'll the say fields, it's about a mile right? long. Think, it's yeah. about a mile long, yeah. the, the rows of it. It's about a mile long. So you have to walk from one end all the way down to the other end. And you're bent over, and you try, and the sun, there's no shade nowhere. Because mm. the only way for cotton to grow, it has to be sun, no shade. And so all the fields are out there. And in Louisiana, you think 108, well, I forget, we in California. I'm, I, I live in Texas. Yeah, now. yeah, right. It's 108 every day. We're in Vegas, so it's about, <laughs> about the same. But you guys have humidity, it's, right? Yeah, it's yeah. different. It, the humidity in Texas is not as bad as it is in Louisiana. Sure. It's like 100% every single day. It's actually feels like you are in a stove really working yeah. inside of it every single day that's how hot it was out there but of course after a while you kind of get used to it too because i'll never forget the time i left you know uh louisiana and moved to texas and it was about maybe three years before I came back. And when I came back and I hit Louisiana, I, I stepped out of the car and that heat hit me. I'm like, wow, 
I never knew how hot it was, how, how humid it was out here yeah. until now. Because it's like I stepped out of my car and stepped into an oven. That's how hot it is in Louisiana, where I'm from. The humidity yeah. in Texas is nothing compared to. So that then Louisiana. that raised the threshold for what you consider difficult. It's like you compare it to yeah, that. Yeah, that, yeah. And that was another job <laughs> I worked. We had a jackhammer. <clears throat> And uh, they had they had these uh, paper mills, and uh, for some reason or another, they would use as asbestos or something because you know they are working with all these chemicals, and so they have to have everything insulated in these paper mills. That job we were literally had on a suit the whole time we were working, full hazard suit, breathing oxygen with this jackhammer, just. Eight hours a day. Yeah. That's the hard. That's that's hard work. Uh, chopping cotton. That's the hardest work ever. Nothing's harder than that. And you think this so social yeah. media? I could, I would consider that work. <laughs> See, I think social media could be more of a mentally taxing thing because at least for me I'm always thinking about it like my mind oh, yeah. <laughs> never shuts off every waking moment is thinking YouTube titles <sighs> thumbnails strategy trends nonstop well, see I got but things it's I more can like compare a physical. It to yeah. I got jobs I can I can compare social media to uh, growing up in Louisiana yeah you know that was one job I had uh, working in the restaurant uh, washing dishes <laughs> for eight hours. Um, I've had some pretty good jobs, pretty bad jobs. Yeah. Pretty bad jobs. Why did you stay at the cotton place? Like, what was the motivation of staying there if it was they, the most grueling labor they, you've ever they, had? They paid you real good. For that. Yeah, yeah. If minimum wage was a dollar an hour, they paid you like $4 an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you wow. like, oh, Okay, yeah, sign me up for that job. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and, and they did. They paid you real good. But it was hard. It was the hardest work I've ever yeah. done. Do you think that helped build character for where you are today? For the most part, <clears throat> I'll say it like this. I've always <clears throat> enjoyed money for some reason or another. So I've always found a way to make it. Yeah. I think I started my first job when I was like eight years old. I would uh, sweep the parking lot of the neighborhood grocery store, and then I would mop inside, and then I would stock drinks. They paid me a quarter a day. And back then, you know, this yeah. 70s, <laughs> right. that was a lot of money because you could buy a lot with a quarter. You could buy Snickers, <laughs> soda was a nickel. You could buy soda, yeah. and cookies. Oh, man, it went a long way. I remember my, my grandpa would tell me all the things that he could buy with a nickel. Exactly. And this was back in like the, thing to do. Yeah, it, back in like the 1930s. But he would say you go to the candy store with a nickel and you'd be able to buy whatever you wanted. Like yeah. you get like bags of candy for a nickel. Yeah, that's where then. that's where a quarter was for me. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a lot. And I I've always worked. You know, I had jobs where I would mow yards, knock on people's door, you need your yard mowed? Yeah. I I did that for a long time. In Louisiana they had pecan trees everywhere. I would always just go to a tree and just throw a stick up there and, and knock as many down as I could. Mm -hmm. And they would buy them from you at the liquor store. Yeah. So I did that job. And then Coke bottles. Recycling? <laughs> well, yeah. we can call it that. Yeah. <laughs> they would give you like a, a nickel for, for if you, you took the Coke bottle. Most of the grocery stores did that. You brought them in there. Yeah. So I, I, oh man, so many ways I can make money. And so many ways I did make money. Yeah. At one time when I was in high school, I had three jobs. I was working the clock for the intramural games. I was working at that store, uh, you know, stocking the drinks and everything, clean up. And I worked at a restaurant, uh, went washing dishes and, you know, cleaning tables and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I had three jobs that I was doing at one time. In what, high school. What were you spending the money on? Or were you just saving it? I was spending the money on <laughs> clothes. Clothes, come on, man. No. <laughs> I, I wasn't saving <laughs> nothing. I was spending every nickel or dime I made on either clothes or food. I, I've always eaten a, ate a lot. Yeah. I've always eaten a lot. So 
I was always eating. And I, you know, I didn't depend on my mom for, yeah. you know, these things, you know. I, I, I was kind of like a ind- <laughs> independent contractor as a kid. <laughs> I pretty much made my own money because I didn't want to buy the shoes that, you know, she would buy for us. Yeah. I didn't want to wear the clothes that she would buy for us. I bought my own, you know. (laughs) Did any part of you want to save that, though, just knowing that, like, hey, you didn't grow up from money, so you should save more of it? Or were you just like, I'll just make more? I didn't really have a reason to save back then because, like I said, I had needs of my own. Like like I said, I didn't want to buy. I didn't want to wear what she wanted to buy me. So I bought my own stuff, and I made my own money. And like I said, I ate. A lot back then, a whole lot. <laughs> I've always eaten a whole lot my whole entire life. So where did this intensity and wantingness to work and push yourself and excel and everything that you did, because you said you graduated cum laude, you applied to a hundred jobs, you were an intense lifter ever since you were like 12 years old. You've continued not only to excel, but also to have this this crazy high level of dedication and focus towards every single thing that you do in life. And uh, where does this come from? Was it something that was instilled to you by your parents or was it just like, you think it's a innate thing you were born with it? It was something that I was born with. Mm -hmm. I was always trying to be the best at everything that I was that I did. I was always challenging myself to be the best at everything it was that I did because being the best, um, the rewards were greater, <laughs> you know, and uh, I always challenged myself at everything that I did, everything. Even if I was, you know, playing a pickup game of cards, <laughs> checkers, chess, anything, I was always challenging myself to be the best at everything that I did. Same thing in, in college, like, like, like you were saying, you know, if I wasn't the smartest guy in every class I went to, I would always study with the smartest guy. Like, who's, who's in here? Who in here in this class is smarter than me? Most most of the time, I was the smartest. Sometimes I wouldn't. So I'm like, okay, if I learn from him, I can be, you know, like him. Yeah. And 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 I've always challenged myself like that. Everything I've always did. Not like like you said, just kind of like that innate ability that I was kind of like born with. Why do you feel like you had to push yourself to be the best all the time? Because, like I said, is that that um, is that feeling the uh, you know the reward you get basically. Yeah. What are the rewards? Rewards are so much better. Well, let's see, if I'm if I was the the smartest, you know, at something, you know, it was always a, a challenge thing to me. You know, saying to myself, I, I, I accomplished this. And so it's kind of like a personal vendetta I have within myself for the most part. If you're not the best at something, you can always become better. There's always a way that you can either outwork somebody or outthink them. And uh, that's kind of the way, like, the way I looked at bodybuilding. You know, when I first got into it, I wasn't that good because I really didn't know that much. I figured that, you know, if I could do things that certain people won't do, uh, I can be just as good as they are. Was it difficult for you transitioning out of professional bodybuilding, knowing that, like, this is the one thing that you were, like, the best in the world at many years in a row? And, and then mm. not doing that, was that, like, it's got to be a huge shock. Yeah, in a way it was, because, you know, you're entering, in, entering into a different field, something that you don't know a lot about. Yeah. But it was the same way with bodybuilding, you know. I didn't know a, a lot about that. And eventually I, I learned, you know. And like I said, uh, if you're not the smartest, you can always learn from somebody who is. And uh, that's pretty much how I look, looked upon life my whole entire life. Are you taking the same approach now with social media? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I take the same approach with just about everything I do. Yeah. Uh, I figure <clears throat> if there's a will and there's a way. 
And with me, there's always a wheel. You've always. done you've done some really interesting collaborations recently. I love the video with Jesse James West. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, and um, I was sent some of your breakdowns in terms of the businesses that you run, and it's it's surprising to me because everything is so separate. And everything is like, it, it stands on its own leg from your YouTube and Facebook earnings over a million a year. Appearance is $300,000 a year. So a lot how, of appearances. <laughs> how, how often are you doing appearances? Man, it's there were times that I would leave my house for three months. See, it's 365 days in a year, right? So yeah. out of those 365 days, I was gone 300 days. Just how, doing appearances just or doing appearances. How do you manage? Because my thought is that like that's one of the least earning parts of your business, but it takes it seemingly takes the most amount of time. Is that worth it to you, or is it more so about you getting in front of fans and, well, and the just, face-to-face just interactions? Let's see it like this. If it wasn't worth it, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> so it was definitely worth it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But then we also have apparel, two million dollars a year. Coleman Athletics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sponsorship deals, another one and a half. And this is the one that I was telling Jack that I was <laughs> shocked about. $750,000 a year doing cameo. <laughs> I am blown. Uh, I didn't even I mean, know you amazing. could make that much money. That's crazy. Cam- that is. Uh, I, I have about. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, I my have, God. I have about 10 of those things holding right now. I was, no. I was doing them up in my room Are you before serious? I came down here. Yeah. How many do you get per day? <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I can get 10. A day? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how much are they for per cameo? 300. 300? Yeah. That's amazing. No. That is <laughs> 10 of them. Amazing. <laughs> it is. So, <laughs> wow. So I'm on, so I'm on cameo. But it, think, it don't take that long to do it. You know, how long does it take to say happy birthday or happy anniversary? <laughs> so I'm on cameo. What advice do you have for me? Mine is 175 for a cameo, and I maybe get one a week. Oh, man. Maybe, but I don't push it. Do you, do you like, advertise the cameo all the time, or, or people just find it? Because it's they like... They just find it. I don't advertise it at all. Imagine what you could do if you advertised yeah, it. Yeah, I know. It, well, now that we're I, talking I, about I it, people are going to see it. with it. Because <laughs> I'm also on Memo, too, which is the same thing as cameo. <laughs> yeah. So, you know... Uh, yeah, if I advertise, I wouldn't be able to keep up with it for sure. <laughs> That's incredible. Ten yeah, I can't a believe day. That. I mean, seven hundred. Do you just? Years. You must grow desensitized. If I'm getting ten a day, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would be uh, like ecstatic. I said, yeah, there's a wheel. There's a way. <laughs> uh, then we got live signings, another three hundred thousand dollars a year, um, and then hosting bodybuilding shows, three fifty. And this is what I find really interesting: is your supplement company that's projected to do $30 million in revenue this year. Yeah, yeah, you should have saw what we started out at, though. <laughs> so tell us how... It, this yeah. is our, what, our 12th year, I think, 13th year? When, when did you start doing supplements, and what what prompted you to get into that? How do you design it? How do you make that? Well, see, I started with supplements uh, back in 1994. I think I got my first contract. Well, I was with two or three different other companies, mm. And uh, I saw the the profit they were making. I'm like, man, if I'm making them this kind of money, what kind of money can I make myself if I got into it? And that's how I got into it. And how were those first few years for your supplement company? Extremely tough. Like Mm -hmm. I said, those were the years I was gone 300 days because I had so many appearances to do. And, you know, I was... You know, my, my supplement business is probably 80% international and 20% domestic. Really? Yeah, because we started the company internationally. We didn't even do domestic for some years. Why did you choose to but only body open building it? Bodybuilding is way more popular international than I it is. No idea. What countries? It, just about anywhere. In, really? Any, anywhere else in the world. I, I, I've gone to places like India and field. The whole entire mall with people. The whole. Why do you think mall. that is? Do Brazil, you think- the same thing. The whole entire mall. You look and you see all these levels yeah. of people. It's kind of mind blowing. I 
I have pictures of some of it, but yeah, I probably couldn't find it if I tried. But uh, it's so I, like I was this one time I was in uh, Bulgaria, and I was with the president uh, opening chess tournaments, <laughs> oh, opening gosh. gyms. Yeah, and, you know, I I don't think I've even <clears throat> met a president here in the United States, but in another country, I can be with one. I, I've met in several different countries. I've met the president of the country <laughs> and hung out with him. That's wild. <laughs> Why is it so much bigger internationally than here in the United States? Because internationally, they don't have any bodybuilders. Really? They really and truly don't. The, all the great bodybuilders come from the United States. You know, they every 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 now and then. You know, like uh, Mr. Olympia now uh, is a guy from Iran, you know. Before that, the uh, other, only other Mr. Olympia that I can think of right now that was from another country, if I thought back for enough, I'd probably think of another one. But Dorian Yates, he won six from England. But, you know, after that, I can't think of any other guy that won the Olympia. Mm. Because, but of course, you know, there are other bodybuilders in these countries, but they're just not, you know, on the same level that we are. It's like God's like, come on, yeah. put all the great bodybuilders in America. <laughs> why? I don't know. <laughs> but that seems like that's the way it is. So that's why we launched our company in uh, Spain really? in 2011. Do you think part of that has to do with the unhealthy diet culture in America and how we're a very obese yeah. country <laughs> and people just generally don't care so much about that. <laughs> and in other areas, like, yeah. you know, people, mm-hmm. I don't know, I think, they're healthier. I, I think that has a lot to do yeah. with it. <laughs> I saw something on Twitter earlier today that was comparing the average meal for a middle school student in the United States versus that of a middle school student in France. And the differences were astounding. I mean, the Americans had all the fried food, processed food. Mm -hmm. The Italians were eating, like, salads, grapes, carrots, like, a chicken bread, or, like, fish. It's like you don't have that. That, 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 Seriously, there's a (laughs) thing of salmon on a plate. That's funny. Like, the average. To even just think that, like, someone (laughs) middle school is having fish And then you can see how how many obese people there are in these other countries, too. You know, like, China. I mean... Um, I, I name a whole bunch, you know, <laughs> countries, you know, compared to U.S. How many obese people there are? Yeah, but uh, you know, it's the, I guess it's the culture, for the most part. That's what I tend to think. <clears throat> When's the last time you had McDonald's? Probably when I won the Olympia. Are you <laughs> no. serious? That, that, that's my go-to meal after every Olympia. Are you serious? It's been that long. Yeah. And what do you order? I, I can't stand it now. You you. Well, you can't stand it? I can't. No. You don't like the taste of it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. But the last time you had it was that long ago. So. That long ago. Yeah. What did you order? Uh, double quarter pounder with cheese. Yeah, this is, this is my uh, <coughs> after a, a celebration meal. I have pizza already in the room because I've already had somebody to order it. And uh, I've always already ordered Champagne, nine times out of ten. <laughs> Don't carry on. We'll eat pizza in the room for about an hour, hour and a half. And then we go to McDonald's and we'll have a uh, quarter pounder with cheese, a couple of them maybe. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some chocolate chip cookies. And then uh, after that, we go to strip club. <laughs> <laughs> the whole family. The whole family. <laughs> the family? Yeah. That's what's... Whoever's celebrating with me, that's where we'll be going. Every single how, year. how much would you spend there? Oh, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Oh you just lost track. <laughs> who cares? <laughs> I just won. <laughs> so, would the strippers recognize you as you walk in and be like, "Hey, that's he just won." No, because no. they they are they, they you, it's dark in there first yeah. of all, you know, and they have certain clients. That they are used to dealing with, for, for the yeah. most part, most of them are. So no, not really. They don't really. Don't How would they them. treat you, being like such a big guy walking in there? Did you get like special he treatment or like? 
What? He would need three if while everyone if else. It's a, if it's a small one, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I, I get real special treatment. If it's a big one like the one in Vegas, uh, they don't even notice me. <laughs> Plus, I had my whole family with me. My mom. Your mom? Why would you go with your mom? <laughs> my, 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 my sisters. What? My aunt. It, yeah, my why? brother. <laughs> why? I can see your brother, but like, but why the whole family? Why not just say like, you family know. Family that, you know, <laughs> uh, wins together, hangs together. <laughs> Would you buy them like dances? Like your mom and your sister? What are they coming with you for just to hang out? Just to hang out. They just hang out. Okay. <laughs> wow. Is that not it's awkward part of the to be with your mom? Yeah, I just, like. I'd get awkward. I couldn't do it. Oh, like, yeah. You're, you're, uh, you ain't got a mom like mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my my mom is known for partying every single night of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so do you only then go to strip clubs once you win? Yeah. Or, okay, if, you, so that's, if you were to lose, would you not go to a strip club? Uh, yeah. Because I, I think the year I lost, we still, we still went. Mm. Yeah, sure did. <laughs> you would go sure either did. way. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. It's a routine. <laughs> it's a routine. So we're doing it. It's the same routine. Win or lose. <laughs> I'm curious because this may sound like a, an odd question, but I'm just so fascinated. When you're that ripped, that huge, that muscular, mm -hmm. do you think that you have more success with the ladies than somebody who's like ripped, but not like, I mean, like traps or like, you know, six inches off your shoulders, you know, like. No doubt. <laughs> you have more success when you're that. <laughs> no doubt. Interesting. But I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't. These basketball players, they, I think they, got, they may have, a, have me beat. Mm. And some, maybe some of the football players, too. Talk to some of those guys. Uh, uh, they, they, they get a lot of attention, too. Mm. Uh, so I think for the most part, I think <clears> – <throat> Sports where they can see your face, mm -hmm. you know, get most of the attention. Because, you know, I, I don't know about the football players. It's, but they wear their helmets and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's kind of hard. And, you know, to see, especially uh, like a guy that's, you know, blocking, you know, for somebody. Yeah. Still making the money and everything, but he doesn't have his face out there. Because yeah. he always has on that helmet. Now, the guys catching the ball, you know, they, so when they catch, they take that helmet. Yeah. <laughs> they take that helmet off. Yeah. The guy running the ball in, yep, yeah, soon. And, of course, the quarterback saying, those guys, you know, I think they they also yeah. real popular with the women. Now, how would you balance everything you're doing with also, like, having a family, relationships? How do you find the time for all that? Uh well, do you prioritize like one thing at a time or like one over another? Like right now I got to work out. This is my priority. I yeah, I've always priority, prioritized, yeah. you know, uh, work out and uh, work came, came before anything. Yeah. Yeah. So there were times where like when I'm in camp getting ready for a show, they know not to even come by my house. First of all, I'm in a bad mood. Always. <laughs> And I don't really know it, that I'm in a bad mood because it's normal for me to act that, that a certain way, you know, because I'm so focused, you know, yeah. you kind of lose track of certain things. Yeah. <laughs> and your attitude is one of them. And then uh, <clears throat> they already know, you know, that uh, when it's training camp comes, uh, I'm in training camp. There's no partying. There's no hanging out. There's no going to movies. There's no birthday parties. There's no nothing. Everything is uh, revolved around, you know, getting ready for the show mm -hmm. for the most part. So. And how long would you be in that mindset for? I'll say three months. Okay. Sometimes four. I heard F Floyd Mayweather is the exact same way. Yeah. It, before a fighter, when he's you training, he just zones in. You can't talk to him. No mm -hmm. one's around him. He is just in that zone 24-7. Yep, 24-7. Yep. Don't go nowhere. Yeah. Don't really do too much or nothing, you know. And uh, that's just the way it is. Yeah. And after your performances, let's say you win a Mr. Olympia, you said that you celebrate for a day. What's it look like <laughs> after that one night? Are you still going to continue it's eating for a little business. bit? It's back, back to business. Back to so One day off. Yeah, one day to have one fun. One day off. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it a day off because yeah. you just won. You know, you 
at least working earlier that day. Yeah. You know? So it's it's a few hours off, <laughs> and then it's back to business. Yeah. Yeah. How did having your first daughter change your outlook on life? I was in college when that happened, yeah. and uh, really didn't give it a lot of thought because my mind was on, you know, making money and and building a career. Yeah. So it really wasn't a good thing for me. Sure. And uh, it was a bad thing for if, if you ask me, and if, yeah. and, and if you ask her too, <laughs> she'll tell you uh, how how uh, uh, I treat you that particular person. And now, it's, of course, it's different. You know, yeah. you know, once 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 you know, I've uh, been successful. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a lot different. Yeah. It does kind of like change you in a way, you know. But I've I've had uh, after I won the Olympia, I think I had four girls like back to back. Yeah, the first one was uh, eleven, I think. Then thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, yeah. <laughs> just that quick. Did you did you ever look into this of why you would only have daughters? Is that just like a coin flip and it just happened to flip tails like multiple times in a row? Like, what are the chances of that? No, God has certain purposes for certain people in life. <laughs> and mine was to populate the <laughs> earth with daughters only. <laughs> yeah. There ain't no other, they, there's no debating it. And seven? Seven daughters? Eight. Eight. Yeah, it's easy to remember. Eight, no, eight daughters, eight no sons? None. You'd think that you'd have just like you'd an think, inordinate huh? amount of like testosterone and like yeah, you know, yeah. Y I would chromosomes I would, I would, or whatever. I was to, thinking that same thing. At number thing. six, did you not go to the doctor and say like, hey, look, it's six daughters in a row. What's going on here? <laughs> What's like, going on here? It's got to be. No, because I yeah. always thought it was going to be a son, you know, yeah. every time. And until that last one, I'm like, okay. It ain't gonna happen. Was there, but was there a desire to try for number nine and like, hey, nope. maybe the ninth? My wife wasn't try. having it. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm getting this stuff out of me, so I don't have any more. And she, had, that was number six for her. <laughs> oh my gosh! You gotta try again. Did you, yeah. did you keep trying because nope. you? Because you wanted to try to get a, a son eventually? <laughs> eventually, you think. Like, you were at four, and you're like, all right, we'll try one more. We'll get a son. And the daughter, you're like, okay, we'll get one more son. And yeah, daughter. exactly. Every time, you're like, <laughs> and you're like, this is the one. Nope. This is the one. Nope. This is the one. Nope. I'm like, oh, man, it ain't going to happen after that eight times. Well, if, if you had a son, was the goal for your son to kind of like get into bodybuilding as well and, like, carry uh, your name? Not really. Like, not really. No. The, the goal is for him just to grow, a, grow up and, you know, be who, whoever he wants to be, you know, just like me. Yeah. You know, I grew up and called my own destiny that you know God put me on. <laughs> yeah. For the most part, because the one that I wanted that didn't happen. I like say I, I always thought I was gonna be a professional football player because I had so much fun and, and enjoyed it so much, but uh, wasn't meant to be. Yeah was not meant to be. It's interesting, even with uh, Arnold's. I think he has two sons. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One, I think, is really into bodybuilding. The other's not. Yeah, exactly. And it's just kind of you up to know. them. <laughs> yeah, it's just up to them how they want to pursue just whatever they want I to I think that's life. the best way to, to go through life. Yeah. Let kids be who they want to be. Because, like I said, you know, really not up to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's and really not. How are you as a father? Did Do you ever meet the boyfriends as they, you know, brought them to you, and what was that like? <laughs> I, I try not to meet them. <laughs> really? I try not to meet them. Cause, uh, I don't want to be friends with, you know, and then uh, it don't work out. You know, yeah. got to meet another one. It don't work out. Got to meet another one. Uh, no, I'll, I'll wait till you... Uh, Get married, then men maybe you know. <laughs> you'll meet them after they get married. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, then maybe, maybe you'll yeah, meet them. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I I didn't really had I hadn't had that uh, happen yet. Well, yeah. well, my two oldest daughters, yeah, they they both got married, and I I think the one came to me and asked me, and the other one, 
not so much and so I didn't really care either way. <laughs> yeah. I ain't trying to meet, you know, this guy and that guy. Sure. I got better things to do with my time. <laughs> <laughs> I would just imagine it being so intimidating. Yeah. Like, oh <laughs> well, <laughs> Probably would be. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm really not too nice with people I don't really know that well. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're dating my, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Especially when you date my daughter. <laughs> oh, gosh. So yeah. When you went on Rogan, he brought up stem cells to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm curious because I never got to hear about a follow-up because he wanted to refer you to his friend, Dr. Riordan or Riordan or something like that. Uh -huh. Was was there any follow-through with that? Did any stem cell work? No, no. I, don't, I, 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 I can't remember. It's been so long now that I don't know if I was already doing it or not. But uh, I know for the last, at least the last two years, uh, almost two years that I've been getting stem cells, mm -hmm. and it's been the best thing that has ever happened to me in my life. Really? Yeah, but you got to go out of this country to do it because they don't really allow the real stem cells that come from the placenta, you know? Yeah. They don't, they don't allow that here in the United States because politics for the most part, you know, hmm. pain. Uh, people would lose too much money. Because for the most part, it wiped, it wipes out the pain that I, I, I go through. Is that just temporary? It's for regenerative too. Well, I say it's regenerative because I, I go like every four months. Yeah. Where do you go? Uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Really? I was just there. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll be in so much pain, like, nights and nights in a row that I can't, you know, it'll wake me up. And sometimes I can't sleep. I'm in so much mm. pain because I have a herniated disc yeah. in my upper back still. And uh, some other ish pain areas, too. As soon as I get the stem cell uh, injection, it completely goes away in, like, maybe four or five days. Four. Completely. I, I go right. from... Not being able to sleep to sleeping like a baby. So, okay, I what exactly is stem cells? Like, like they go and do they just take some of the placenta juice or whatever it yeah. is and then just inject it into you? Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's it. So my understanding is that what they are, they're like blank cells. They yeah. can transform to oh. anything they anything you surround themselves with, they'll turn into that. So if you inject them in your leg, they'll turn into, you know, leg cells, your spine. So they inject it into you your spine. back. Yeah, they can. That the first time I had it done, that's the way they did it. Now they just do it IV and it I guess it, it goes throughout the whole entire body. Wow. What would happen if so I don't have any like like injuries or ailments or anything like that if a normal healthy person started taking stem cells would i would it be like a steroid of sorts would it make me really strong or something like that i don't think do anything because it wouldn't have no purpose huh you know you, you gotta have a reason to, to have them you know it's like treating something that's not there for the most part you know on a healthy yeah. person so for you is that just to keep keep it like a baseline or is this for like recovery in terms of stem cells it's for me it's to keep the pain away sure. and hopefully you know recovery you know also I, I have a lot of numbness in my feet and in my legs but uh a lot of it has gone away and that was in my legs now it's if i can get to go down to my feet. It's like the more injection I get, the better everything else gets, the numbness and everything mm. gets too. And how, how much is it? Yeah, it's yeah, just about as expensive as a stem cell. Um, I happen to be lucky, so, so I don't pay. It's oh. free? <laughs> that would make sense. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how much would it I be? Do, do, uh, I like, think he told me, what did he tell me? Now I got to think, because I've never had to pay, so... I think he said it's about twenty eight hundred per injection time you go and you yeah. get an injection. Yeah. In the United States though, I think it was either Rogan or you mentioned this about it being like twenty thousand dollars in the United States. If you wanted and it's not as good. Yeah. 
I've 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 never tried it in the United States because, like I said, they, they don't really offer it. Yeah, they'll tell you it's some kind of stem cell, but it's not the real one from the placenta. Yeah, you know, I don't know where that stem cell's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> it's better not to ask. I just know, yeah, it, it doesn't it doesn't work that good. Cause I, I also I remember having it done once and nothing. You know, I, I didn't trust I didn't notice anything. Yeah. No relief whatsoever. So I'm curious, what else are you doing in addition to stem cells right now? Uh, Just in terms what? of recovery, body health. The stem cells is taking care of everything. Really? Fixing everything. So I don't have to do anything else yeah. uh, besides that. Really? No more surgeries or anything else? You know, I was going to have another surgery on my mid-back with that, where the herniated disc was. Yeah. But the uh, stem cells kind of almost healed it. Really? So I don't, I don't need that surgery anymore. The pain is pretty much gone. I mean, it was real bad at one time. It was the worst, one of the worst pains ever that I can remember. Over the years, I've uh, had, you know, uh, surgeries for the herniated discs. I've had like three or four. Uh, like my whole neck, whole back for the most part. But uh, this time, the stem cells healed the uh, herniated disc. Yeah. And uh, there's no pain. And if there is, you know, like I say, I always go and do the stem cell treatment and it takes it away. Yeah. Completely away. All of these injuries that your body has incurred. Um, is that a just a objective byproduct of being that high level of performer in bodybuilding? Like it's just going to happen? Um, I don't. I don't know because uh, I, I never really injured myself in the gym that I can recall. I remember <clears throat> when I was playing football in college, I, I hurt my back real, real bad. And uh, I would I started going to the chiropractor, and uh, it started getting getting better and better every time I went. So I, I did chiropractic my whole college career, and then when I got out of college, I continued to go. Mm-hmm. And uh, only t- I can remember. Injured my back once uh, in the gym, but uh, I I think I herniated the disc a uh, long time ago. In the it was around 1996, I think. You know, I kind of like kept going to the chiropractor. You know, and most part it it at least for me it pretty much fixed it. It healed it and didn't have any problems with it. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, once I stopped doing bodybuilding and stopped going to chiropractic, I started having problems with my back. And uh, that's when I had to have this first surgery. Was there a specific turning point or something that happened that kind of bound you to having a bunch of surgeries later in life? Like, was it the first herniated disc or was it a specific it was, surgery Surgery you went undertook? It, it was the first surgery. The first surgery you think is where you maybe went wrong. Where I went wrong, yeah. So what happened there? Well, for some reason or another, you know, my the other discs kind of like were affected from that first surgery. It's like <clears throat> you have a... A, a bunch of cans stacked on top of each other, and you take one out, the other, and the, uh, the other one just fall. So I, I think because I operated on that one disc, it kind of messed up the other ones. That's the only thing I could I could see that happen because, like I said, uh, it was never like I was in the gym working out, and all of a sudden I felt the pain or something. It was just that one surgery caused the other discs of mine to herniate. That's the only thing I can, that's the only solution I could come you, up with. Do you think that maybe your pain tolerance is so high 
that when something is wrong, it doesn't quite register with you. And you're yeah, like, yeah, now I'll keep working out. Yep. Keep yep. pushing. Because I remember when I herniated uh, uh, a disc one time I was working out, just kept working out. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, I stop and uh, don't do anything. And the pain comes, you know. And by that time, it's too late because, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. I've already injured myself and kept working out because, you know, like you said, the high pain tolerance that I yeah. have. And um, just made it worse by continuing to, you know, to do what I was doing. What was that workout that you were doing that herniated that first disc? I think it, it, it was squatting. Because I, I remember like it was yesterday. I was squatting like 600. And, you know, I do do that all the time. <laughs> just <laughs> another day. Fact, I do like 12 or 15 reps. <laughs> this day I was coming from rep number eight and I heard a loud bang. It was loud. It was so loud it kind of hurt my ear. <laughs> and I remember like, what was that? I turned around. Actually, first I dumped away. I like, you know, <clears throat> we always like slap, slap each other to uh, get each other fired up. We get ready to do something real heavy. And I thought the guy had hit me, you know, that would spot me. I'm like, did you hit me? Like, no, man, I didn't touch you. <laughs> I'm like, what was that loud noise? Like, I don't know, but I heard it too. Well, it, with me, you know, on to the next <laughs> exercise. And that's what I did. I went on to the next exercise, finished the workout, got home. And I was on my way to work. And I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I think I'm still in pain from... Working out, but I, I, you know, you know I'm, I'm always, sometimes, always in pain after doing certain types of workout, like legs. I, I'll always be in pain for like <clears throat> an hour, two hours, something like that, an and hour. then it'll go away. Oh my gosh. But you know, it's not a major yeah. pain. But what kind of pain <laughs> is like, it? A soreness or is like it like an actual pain? Like, pain. Kind of like a, more like a soreness type of a pain. You know, and it kind of like wears off after a while. Well, this day it, it didn't wear off. And I'm like, something's wrong. You know, instead of going to work, I'm like, I think I better, I think I better go to the hospital. <laughs> and that's what it was. It was a herniated disc. Something was wrong. <laughs> and, and when you were doing that squat, do you remember if like your form slipped for a second or if it was just complete chance that you were going down, your form was perfectly fine, something went awry and the mm-hmm. disc herniated? I, it was the same form I always used. Uh, I don't know. Only thing I, only thing I could think of is <clears throat> I uh, did the Olympia and uh, I think I took off a week because uh, – I was I was out of town, you know, doing stuff and didn't get a chance to go to the gym and and because I missed that week, it caused my body to get a little weaker because you know, I like I said I, I do 600 all the time for 15 reps, like it ain't like it ain't nothing. But this particular day, I think because I missed that week it kind of decreased my strength a little bit. Uh, I threw off the rhythm of something. I don't know what it was. All I know is coming up on rep number eight, I heard a loud bang. <laughs> and uh, that was it. That was the herniated disc. How much time are you spending today running your businesses? Like what's an average day look like for you? Uh, I spend probably as much time as I possibly can after I work out. <laughs> and uh, I would say probably five, six hours maybe, somewhere in there yeah. a day. And you're making a gym right now? Is oh, it a destination gym? Uh, well, see, I had a gym yeah. uh, in my old house. Yeah. And uh, somebody offered me some new equipment. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's part of this new endorsement I'm doing now. And now I'm going to build a new gym in this new house that uh, 
I'm about to, you know, where well, I've already moved into it, but I'm going to build this new gym yeah. real soon, you know, when I get around to it. And hopefully that's as soon as possible. <laughs> so when did you buy this house? Why did you, why did you move? What, what about this new house was? Uh... Well, I was in the house I was in uh, kind of outgrew the family. Sure. <laughs> the girls are getting on up there in age, you know, and, uh, you know how girls are they gotta have their own space you know you can't cram them all in the same room yeah. <laughs> like they were now they want their own room so now we got uh bedrooms and showers for all the girls <laughs> how big is the house? Their own. it's it's twice the size so the house i was living in was a little over three thousand the new house is almost Six thousand and a little over six thousand, okay. two hundred, something like that. That's great. So it's, it's twice the house. Though. You got to do a you got to do a house tour. And then, I think that would be great. And, and, yeah. and yeah. Uh, pool and you know jacuzzi and all that stuff too. Where the new house didn't, the old house didn't have all that. Yeah. How and and uh, and more land because my you know my old house. I don't think I had nowhere near what I have now. I almost have an acre, <clears throat> where my old house uh, I didn't even have close to uh, what, a third of an acre mm. fourth of an acre <laughs> it was pretty small especially after I built the gym you know when I moved in first moved in the house there, there, there was no gym there or nothing so I had a lot more land yeah but once I built that gym that uh, took all the room that was, you know, there. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no hardly no room whatsoever out there in the backyard. And it's a little bit in front, but nothing in the back. How often do you relax or just take time for yourself and not do anything that either is productive or making money or like bring value to you monetarily in some way? Yeah, I try to at least once a year go on a vacation. And that vacation stems around cruise. Cruise. And I started that in 1999. I took my first cruise. Where do you cruise to usually? Caribbean, uh, Mexico. And on these cruises, are you you're, you're not working at all? You're kind of just taking it easy, lounging by the pool, getting some drinks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a whole lot of work. I still have to, you know, check email and all that kind of stuff and keep up with. It. Everything that's going on business wise, yeah. and you look forward to that cruise every year. A lot. I look forward to that really? cruise every year. <laughs> and how long? How long is the cruise? Uh, uh, it's seven, eight day cruise. Okay. Seven, is it days. like a Royal Caribbean? Sort yeah, of thing? yeah. Like we've a, been uh, doing carnival, carnival cruise. Well, I, of course, I've been on Royal Caribbean and a couple of other ones too. But lately, it's been carnival, and uh, you know, actually, the whole family pretty much goes uh, when they can, but. When we go, it's, it, it just, it's never just me and the fam, me and my family. It's me and the whole family, mm. my brothers and sisters, you know, nieces, nephews also go. I mean, I'm sure you're at the point now where you can step back from the business just a little bit and maybe take yeah. two of those cruises per year, <sighs> even three maybe. Well, you know, we do like go to like, uh, we got SeaWorld. We'll go maybe twice a year. So we'll do SeaWorld. That's only, you know, like three or four days here and there. And then and, and, and the cruise. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit more time yeah. <laughs> now. <clears throat> How often, not to just change the conversation entirely, is uh, body dysmorphia amongst bodybuilders? Is it pretty much every single one of them to some extent has a level of body dysmorphia and dissatisfaction with where they're at? I would say so, for sure. <laughs> I would say so, for sure. Do you think it's changing right now with social media and Instagram, that it's, that it's worse today than it was back when you were doing it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's changing for sure because of social media. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot worse <laughs> now right. than, you know, when I was doing it. Because uh, there's... 
So much more criticism. Criticism. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I didn't think about that. So like you post yeah, a picture true. online and you have thousands of people nitpicking. Yeah. And that probably so fuels many, it so yeah. much. So Gosh, many yeah. People can criticize you. It, was, it so reminds me of the guy. Uh, this is recently. Was it Madison Beer? Posted a picture on Instagram and some guy said, uh, you're looking a little fat today. I think wow. you should lose some weight. And she commented back on him and she said, I wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole. And then he went off. He sent her a long DM about how he's trying to be helpful and how she would, she's trying to like help her look more attractive. <laughs> but she it's posted the screenshot. Day. She posted the screenshot about this guy got torn to shreds. Um, but yeah. I didn't think about like how <laughs> you're opening yourself up to criticism of the entire world. All it takes is one person, just mm -hmm. like a bum at home doing yep. nothing with their life to comment, oh, I don't like this about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And it's a lot of that out there, a whole lot. Whereas like I said, in my day, there was none of that, none whatsoever. So yeah. how has social media changed the bodybuilding industry, do you think? It's allowed us to make a lot more money yeah. <laughs> in more ways than one. So many different ways. You're doing a great job, I think, collaborating with a lot of people right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I hear you have something coming up with Arnold. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. We'll be doing one with him in the morning. We got this this workout, so... I think it'd be the first time uh, the a guy from my era and a guy from his era has ever done something like this. Because, you know, Arnold won seven Olympias and I won eight. So it it's, it, it can only be done by, uh, you know, a few guys yeah. anyway. <laughs> so, what's, so what's the video? You guys just working out together? Yeah, yeah pretty much for the most part. Because Arnold, I think he works out every single day just like yeah. me. Uh, I work out six days a week still, you know, and I think he, he's still doing the same thing too. And where's he's he? He's a little bit older than me though. Yeah. Where's that going to be posted? Probably have it on YouTube, you know, Yeah. other places. I would lose other, it. I would lose it to be in that room. Everywhere. Just like, <laughs> just seriously, just don't be a fly on the wall and just watch as like Arnold Schwarzenegger's working out. I would lose yeah. it, man. Do you know what yeah. the workout is? I'm quite sure we'll come up with some. Pretty entertaining. Entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, between you know my uh, eight Olympias and his seven Olympias, we will we'll be able to come up with something. You gonna rub that in his <laughs> face that you have one on him? Every chance I get. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that hey, Arnold, a little better here. <laughs> <laughs> Every chance I get, yeah, of course. <laughs> Got to get him on something because he <laughs> got me everywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel like social media has helped your overall businesses? Because it seems like right now this fueling a lot of the growth, especially for supplements, yeah. cameos. Majorly, in yeah. a major way, yeah. It's allowed us to, uh, for sure, the business to grow and just about everything else too, you know, yeah. because of that, you know. Like I said, there's so many avenues now, you know, so many social media sites they get out there now. So there's so many ways to get, you know, the word out to people and the masses of people that's on there too, you know. There are so many people on there. And some of these people have, what, 200 million followers, 100 million followers, stuff like that. So yeah. it goes to show you how many people are really into it. Alongside your incredible level of focus and pain tolerance mm -hmm. and um, I would just say just intensity. Mm -hmm. I'm yep. also noticing a consistent level of optimism and positivity, even in the face of extremely tough and challenging circumstances. Yep. <laughs> Is this also something that you feel like you were just born with? Do you think that it's yep. provided to you through faith? Do you think that it's something that you could have learned from overcoming this adversity yep. I, over and over and I, I over again and it gave you this I, optimistic? I think b because I've overcome so much adversity in the almost 60 years that I've been on here on this planet that that uh, I'm able to overcome that much more as long as I'm here on this planet because of the, the fight in me. They say it's not the size of the dog in the fight. <laughs> But the size of the fight in the dog. <laughs> yeah. like, and I, I like got that. quite a bit in me. <laughs> what? You have yeah. to, in order to, you know, be successful 
in these days and time. What else do you want to accomplish? Oh, to, to be honest with you, I, I've always said, as long as we are here, we're here for a reason. And uh, whatever that reason may be, we're going to figure it out and we're going to accomplish it. And uh, I'm just waiting, you know, on what it is, the reason why I'm still here. And I think for the most part, the reason that I'm still here is because, you know, right now I have a family, you know, I have yeah. to look out for and take care of. So right now, everything is all of our, and, uh, uh, revolves around them. You know, taking care of them and teaching them that, you know, <laughs> life is not going to be easy and nothing's going to be given to you. Like I say, anything that you're going to get out of life, you're going to have to work hard. But with that hard work and dedication, there are some great rewards uh, to come from it. Yeah. You were told you were too big. For yeah. Mr. Olympia. No, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I was told that one year. But who told you that? One of the judges. The judge said the, you were the, too the big. One time I listened to a judge and I'm like, okay, I'll never do that again. Because the next year I came in, they said I was too small. And <laughs> oh, I was no. like, okay, I'm going to just start taking my own advice like I've always done and do what I want to do. And that's when I came in. The heaviest ever at almost 300 pounds on stage. So how are you too big to win? Because isn't it like size of the muscles? I think it's proportion. And, well, think yeah, it's, it's by shape and symmetry and condition. I guess I didn't have enough condition at the size I was. Oh, so like like less body fat percentage. Water. Oh, water. Yeah. I hear it's pretty crazy leading up to oh, the 24 the, hours before the judges. Pretty crazy. Yeah, uh, pretty but isn't crazy. it like you have to dehydrate a certain amount to show the muscles? Yeah, yeah. How do you learn how to do that? Like, <sighs> you have to put your faith in God. Oh, <laughs> For the most part, because this is extremely hard to do. It is extremely hard. And you can only do it for a certain amount of time. Uh, maybe the most you could probably do that is probably like three hours, four hours at a time, maybe at, at the most. But after that, you are seriously putting the heart in danger yeah. of collapsing. And that's happened a lot lately. What percentage of having an elite um, bodybuilding physique is lifting versus nutrition versus like stretching versus like water intake. Like if you were to make a pie, mm -hmm. like what would the slices look like with all of the different equations that fall into having an elite uh, bodybuilding physique? 60% is from the food. 30% is from the workout. And the rest is... Everything else combined Sleep in there. Sleep and, and all that kind of stuff. stuff yeah. Like that. Yeah. Stretching. Because I used to think, you know, if I'm in the gym working out and lifting as heavy as I possibly can with doing um, a certain number of reps while I'm doing it, that I would get big. I, I thought that would be it. But come to find out that size com comes from eating. Mm -hmm. And I learned that the hard way when I had to kind of like stuff myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was real hard to do at first. And my body kind of adjusted and I got used to it. Was there ever a period of time where the eating and the nutrition was harder than the working out? Yeah. It was that, harder. That, yeah, yeah. That, but, that, that was the time that was harder than the working out when I had to eat all that food. Like when I went from 10 ounces to 12 ounces to 16 ounces, that's, that's when it was harder than working out and everything else. How, do you, how did your stomach expand exactly. so quickly <laughs> to, to not like it, no, wanting no, to throw it, up or it, something? It didn't, like it didn't that. expand quickly. It took a long time for me to do that. It took probably about two, two or three months for my stomach to, I guess, to expand or whatever to get used to that. 
there comes a certain point if I'm eating, let's say I go to like all you can eat sushi in Vegas. Right? <laughs> I love that. Like I'm one. going there and I always I'm end up in the middle of those. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I end up ordering more than I can eat, obviously. And I'm pushing myself because I don't want to get charged for the extra sushi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pushing myself to eat the sushi. And it's to a point where like I'm like, if I have another piece, I'm going to throw up. And I, I don't know what happens mm. if I push through that wall because I never have. Mm. I usually try to get someone else to eat it. What is it like 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 do you ever like throw up from eating so much food or does no, it, your body can I, do it. I've never it can always do eating. it. Yeah, you can always do it. Yeah. Cause I ain't gonna lie to you. When, <laughs> when I was in college, we used to, they used to have these all you can eat places. It was like a dollar. <laughs> they hate it when you come in. Oh yeah, gosh, yeah, they, they lose yeah, they money. They're <laughs> like, no, we can't serve you. <laughs> it was a dollar all you can eat pizza. And man, I would eat so much. It's a good deal. Yeah. And, I, and I'd be stuffed and I'm like, man, I got, I got, I can eat some more. Cause I'm, you, you know, all I got to do is go in the bathroom and uh, do some push-ups, some no. sit-ups, and I can eat some more. Some sit-ups on a full well, stomach? Just, you know, just, on the floor just, of a bathroom? Just, yeah. <laughs> that dirty? I, I did that. You did that? I did that. To get in more pizza? Get in more pizza. Just because you had to eat more for the Because I wanted to eat more. You wanted to eat more. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, a want, not I'm a need. I'm going to get my dollar's worth. <laughs> <laughs> a dollar, literally a dollar's worth. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think God, about time was tough what do you think about <laughs> liver king's diet of eating just like raw meat I, I, I still find that hard to believe <laughs> you don't believe that he eats only that uh, I'm, I don't I, no <laughs> really uh, I, 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 I didn't think that was possible so what do you, you what what is he missing in his diet? Some I don't carbs, know what maybe? he's missing I don't know how he can do it you know I know that I could never do it I don't think I could do it if my life was on the line. So he had a chef prepare us meat, and he, I asked, I said, how fresh is this? He said, well, this morning the meat was alive. <laughs> and we're, like, doing a podcast in the evening, and that morning, just knowing that that animal was, was living this morning, and now it's not, just tripped me out. But he had us eating no way. every bit of the animal from <laughs> yeah. the heart to the kidney, like, kidney testicles. Liver. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do it. Honestly, it's hard for me to eat vegetables. It, yeah. it really wasn't that bad. It kind of tastes like sushi, but a little bit worse. Oh, no. It was, the, it was salty. The thought of would, would make me kind of throw up. Interesting. Yeah, it almost made the me throw up. The bone marrow yeah. was really gross. That one, and oh, also the, the, the kidneys because no they filter, you know, everything. possible so. I could do it. None. No way. I, I don't, I, 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 I'm, I'm still shocked and amazed when I see that. What, and what, I've seen him do it a but yeah. I got, you know, I've seen him do it many times and I, I still don't get it. Do you have any advice for any young aspiring bodybuilders or people that want to get in shape? Maybe they yeah. don't quite have the motivation that you do to get in the gym consistently. What do you recommend to those people? Well, I mean, there's no other way to get in shape besides, uh, you know, going to the gym and eating a, a real healthy diet. But uh, the best advice I give somebody yeah. is what I've learned, you know. That uh, bodybuilding is all about knowledge. And the more you have, the better off you're going to be. So I try to tell somebody, each and every bodybuilder that comes up to me and asks me, how do I become better? And <clears throat> how do I get to, you know, to where you are? Well, I learned from experience, you know. Uh, I didn't know anything at all about bodybuilding when I got into it, mm -hmm. nothing. Didn't know how to diet pose or nothing. But people taught me this stuff. So <clears throat> I just tell people, find somebody who's very knowledgeable and who have proved it. You know, they have proved it, you know. They have, you know, these certain champions that, <laughs> that you know, <laughs> they can show you that they've given these people these diets and, and, and they've gone on and become champions from what they've uh, taught them. Yeah. Find somebody like that and, and that's how you become a champion. What is the most amount of pain that you've ever felt? Was it maybe like a pinched nerve from a herniated disc? Was it maybe a specific lift where you pushed yourself extremely Man. hard? That's, or that's was it working good. like in the, the cotton thing, p picking out the... The plants. That that wasn't pain. That was, <laughs> it was probably <laughs> mental anguish. Yeah, that was mental anguish more yeah. than anything. But pain, man, that's kind of hard to say because I remember when I 
Broke my toe. <laughs> oh man, that was <laughs> not one of those. You drop a weight on your toe. Stepped on a Lego. You dropped a two hundred pound weight on your toe. Some uh, the guy that was lifting it did, and that was painful. That two, was. How does it not crush your toe? Yeah, exactly. I feel like yeah, it would exactly. just be decimated. If you think, but it didn't. You know, it broke it, and that was about it. But that was a lot of pain to go through. I, I did that twice. You've broke done both it of them. How heavy were the weights? One was 25 pounds. Broke it. I dropped it from the floor. Well, when we dropped a 200 pound dumbbell, it was about from right here. Uh, it, wasn't, wow. it, wasn't, it wasn't from up here. Yeah. You know, what like the 25 pound was. But uh, th- those were pretty painful. That's the, the most pain. You know, I remember when I herniated my disc. I mean, I, it wasn't that painful. Mm. And, you know, it, it made a lot of noise. Because I remember that, but I don't remember a lot of pain. Like when you dropped that 200 pound dumbbell on my toe, it was painful as hell. And it hurt like hell. Both times. Two of the most painful things that I've gone through. Did you complete the workout? Both times. (laughs) No. You did? (laughs) Are you kidding? Just kept going. Even with a broken toe. Uh, The next day I went and uh, did squats. Oh my. Gosh. <laughs> you did did squats, <laughs> leg press, and everything. Leg I, I did press. Leg, yeah, yep, she sure did. <laughs> how do you how do you not get sick? Like get a cold or like the flu or high, like some high, high pain tolerance. Do you do you feel sick but just go anyway? Like just push through it, or do you just not get sick? I've been sick mm, two or three times in my life. I can recall. They and, must have uh, been pretty bad though. Yeah, yeah, they were pretty bad. <laughs> One time was the time I moved into my new house, my first new house. I remember throwing up that time. And another time I was in the eighth grade, I remember throwing up that time. And those were only two times. Oh, one time I was on the airplane and I threw up. Those were only three times in my life that I can remember throwing up. Yeah. Do you just have like the perfect genetics? Sounds like like a God tier genetics. (laughs) Like, how are your children? Do they not get sick? No, they no no no. They get sick all the time. They get sick, <laughs> so it's your one off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I like a phenomenon that it only happens to every now and then. I feel like someone should study you <laughs> from like the discipline, yeah, the genetics, to not stem sick. cells from you, and like yeah, you, you got to be the one donating stem cells, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So you've never like done stem cells? You've never tried to give away stem cells or done like genetic makeup research or something like that? Not that I can recall right away. I mean, so, there. Years ago, I'm just gonna chime in real quick. A couple <laughs> years ago, we actually did do a genetic makeup on Ronnie, and he has been. He came back on the test as being under the one percentile of genetic makeup. So his body will regenerate the the cells uh, faster than a normal person. He doesn't get sore after working out in the gym. So <laughs> it's kind of like he's a one off of. The population, so yeah. it's kind of crazy, but that is true. So you, <laughs> that's why you are actually a, a anomaly. Yeah, something like that. Because I don't. He's a phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you were really born <laughs> to yeah. do bodybuilding. Yeah, I mean, I in born, every capacity. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, touched by God to be one of the greatest bodybuilders on the planet. And then I For heard sure. you're also <laughs> opening up another gym. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, we got all this equipment from Panada, so we're going to open up our office gym to anybody in the public that wants to come and work out there. Cool. And uh, most certainly we're going to allow the Olympia competitors uh, for us to be a home gym for them to work out while they're in town. And where is that going to be? Is that Texas? Orlando. Orlando. Yeah, well, I guess you can call it Lake Mary, okay, <laughs> which is pretty close to Orlando. All you right. have an Lake idea Lake when it's going to be open? We're trying to do it right before the Olympia happens. So, hopefully around 
September, somewhere, October. And we got an invite to that, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, if All we're right, in Orlando, yeah, Graham, we got to check it's, that out. It's free, as long, right? As long as you're part of the general public, yeah. All right. Okay. If you go for free, then I'm in. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, thank you thank so you, much Dude, for coming on the Ice Coffee Hour. This is honestly just It was my incredible. pleasure. I had a fun. Really? You're so <laughs> generous with your time, <laughs> too, which is very sweet. But time flies when you're having fun. It really you know, does. I, yeah. I really don't know. It seems like we've been doing this for like 30 minutes, maybe. I know. But I, I think we've been a little bit longer. <laughs> thank you so thank much, you. man. This, year's, this means the world to us that you would come like on say, and like share your story. It was my pleasure. I'd like to say I had a lot of fun doing this. Cool. Yeah. Oh, if you can, just look into that camera and remind everyone to hit the like button and subscribe. Everybody out there, remember, hit the like button and su subscribe. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Lightweight. <laughs> Lightweight. Y'all <laughs> ain't nothing but a peanut. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Means a lot. And uh, until next time. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Cool. Oh, I love <laughs> Thumbnail, that. Man. Oh, yeah. Sorry, if you could...